And welcome back to the Flying Fleet Gridiron Revival Coaches Show right here on WZLA 92.9 FM. We are streaming worldwide, WZLARadio.com. And on your Alexa devices, just say, Alexa, play WZLA Radio. We are live at Irene's in Due West. We'll be here until 8 o'clock. And uh, come on by, say hello. We got some fleet coaches and players and staff and just a whole bunch of people here tonight we're having a great time and uh, talking some flying fleet football and i have as a guest on with us right now malik chevry cornerbacks coach for erskine coach how you doing good good doing pretty good benji how you doing man i'm doing great doing great glad to have you i think you were uh this, this spring you were we were here right yep so are you the official irene's uh interview i believe so i live the <laughs> farthest away from the other coaches so they always help me out by keeping me here in the west i got you i got you it makes perfect sense yep. uh coach tell us a little bit about yourself for those that didn't hear us back in the spring uh where are you from originally um i grew up in a military family so moved around a lot as a kid and then once uh, my, my mom got out of the Air Force, we settled down in Powell Springs, Georgia, late okay. elementary school. So I lived there all throughout high school. So I say I'm from Metro Atlanta, but kind of grew up all over the place as a kid. You know, I think any time you live within like 100 miles of Atlanta, you're from Atlanta, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'll always tell people, though, because we have a guy from on our team from the same high school as me. I say, do not say you're from Atlanta. You have to say Powder Springs. Yeah, that's You have right. to say Powder Springs. We're not the city. We're the suburbs. <laughs> Uh, still a big school, though, there. Yeah, right? 7A school. Wow. I graduated with, like, 550 kids, so wow. about 2,000, 2,500 kids in the school. My my whole school was less than your class. <laughs> <laughs> that's fact. Yeah, big school. That's that's really cool. So, uh, all right, so football, obviously, it's passion. It's love uh, the chav here. Uh, yep. What made you decide to uh, pursue that as a career? Um, so, I had a pretty serious injury in high school. Um, going into my junior high school, I broke my ankle pretty bad. Missed pretty much my, all my junior season. And then that December, I, tr I decided to transfer high schools, whether that was the right decision or not. As a high school kid, didn't really make a difference, but it definitely made a difference in my lifetime. And then my next position coach and defensive coordinator at my next high school, that guy changed my life. Um, changed uh, my way uh, that I thought about football and just the game and all that you get from it. Right. And he kind of inspired me to become a coach because of the impact he made on my life. Man, that's so, amazing. Yeah. That's really Trying cool. Trying to do the same. Yeah, yeah. If I, I, you know, people think, oh, they're just coaching football. I mean, there's so many life lessons wrapped right. up in this game. It's just, it's incredible. Right. We spend so much time with, with our guys, and it's like we really get to know them. It's love hanging around and talking to people. So right. get to know them and, and love on them. Very cool. All right, uh, Malik Shevery here with us, cornerbacks coach for the Flying Fleet. Uh, all right, so what's what's your what's your typical day like uh, with, your, with your corners there? Um, so Tuesday, Thursday is our meeting day. Um, we'll, well, Mondays we have our academic meetings. Scott got finished talking about our academics to all our players. And Tuesdays, um, we'll come in the office in the morning, meet as a staff. We'll have a special teams meeting at 12. Um, cornerbacks meeting at 12.30 following that. And then we'll get to practice, go through all of our pre-practice individual drills, um, get to see them compete in one-on-ones against our receivers, and then compete in seven-on-seven -seven and anything we do against the offense. So always working at it, making sure we're running every day. Our guys got to be in great shape. Yeah. Um, I tell them, I don't care what anyone says. I'm a biased guy anyways. I play DB myself, but DB is the hardest position to play on the field, so they got to be in great shape. Well, you make a mistake, the whole world knows it. Exactly. you get burned. <laughs> <laughs> right. One false step, and it's a touchdown compared to a, a sack or a tackle or anything like right. that. So. I would imagine. Now, I know you can't tell by looking at me because of my build, but I was never a <laughs> cornerback. <laughs> but uh, I would imagine that there are a lot of uh, intricate type, fundamental uh, yep. hand placement, footwork, eyes, yep. a lot that goes into the cornerback position. got to be really, really disciplined with your feet and really, really disciplined with your eyes. Essentially, your eyes are will be the most important thing because you can get in a lot of trouble having your eyes in the wrong spot. Yeah. Whether on the receiver you're supposed to read, whether on the part of the body that you're supposed to read, whether they should be on the quarterback or not, seeing where the quarterback's elbows, where his elbow looking at you, looking away from you, are his shoulders high, shoulders low, is he going to throw it deep, that kind of stuff. So wow. it's a lot, a lot of mental preparation. That's a lot to process. And, I mean, an average play, I think, from start to finish is less than six seconds. Right. So your pro the corner has to process all of that within a, in a second or two. Yep. So our, our main goal in, pro in practice is to to work that stuff and be very tedious in it, especially during fall camp when we practice every day, um, getting after it every single day like for like 20, 30 days straight. So yeah. when it gets to the point it's in a game, it's almost second nature to them at that point. So we don't have to think as much. We want our guys to play fast. Right. Absolutely. Malik Chevry here with us, cornerbacks coach for the Flying Fleet. 
uh, Coach, you've got uh, you've got a great group of kids. Yes, you really do. You yes. want to talk about any of them individually or as a group? Well, I do want to thank a couple of my guys. They came out to to get some dinner and, and support a little bit tonight. Jacory Tanksley, Khalil Allen, Abraham Timoni. Um, our guys definitely have much more numbers in the spring, but the 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 talent, overall talent, is much better in our group now. Um, in the spring, we had some guys that were that were decent. They weren't necessarily ready to play in the spring. Had like two or three guys that that were ready to play in the game. But I think we're getting to the point where we got four, or five, possibly six guys that we can count on. We know if we put them in, they're going to get the job done. Yeah. And um, we got some guys like Khalil Allen just transferred in this this August, and he he busts his butt every single punt. Um, there was a couple times in the um, I'm trying to think what what game it was. I can't remember exactly what game it was, but We'd motion in our wing, and Khalil would get double teamed like he's an NFL gunner. <laughs> it was freaking hilarious watching in the box. But the next thing I know, he's making a move, splitting them, going around them, yeah. making the tackles down the field. So that's, that was freaking awesome to yeah, see. Yeah, absolutely. And I've got some other guys like um, Timoni's been here from the beginning, and he's, he's continuing to get better and better. Um, it, was, it was good to see um, J.J., Javen Mack play this past weekend. Mm -hmm. Young freshman, just, just got here, 18 years old. And like Coach Boyce talked about earlier, that running back from North Greenville was fast. Yeah. And when he broke that 80-yard runner for a second, I thought J.J. was going to catch him, and that was the fastest I've ever seen J.J. run. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't catch him, but that was the fastest I've ever seen him run. So yeah. I really like my group of guys this year. Got a really good dynamic. Um, the guys all enjoy each other, and they make me laugh all the time. So yeah. I love those guys. We were actually chatting a little bit before we, we during the commercial break, and, and you were talking about an instance where so our radio booth is right next to the coach's box in, yep. the, in the press box at, at JW Bab, and uh, you had mentioned that I had called out that. that uh, Timoni was one on one with a guy, and I was like, "They're not. They're not doing that. They're, they're, <laughs> they're not throwing one on one over there, right?" right? And uh, and they did. Yep. And it was incomplete, of course. But uh, uh, do you do you scheme though? I know the offense kind of dictates, mm -hmm. you know, the matchups like that. But do you scheme against that, whether it's uh, press man or, or, or off coverage or zone, or, or is that a call that comes in as a whole? So normally we try to have um, like Timoni's our boundary corner. He'll normally get the one on one type situations like that. Um, there's some things like say we're in we're in zone coverage. We'll tell him to line up press, and it was freaking beautiful. I've been raving over this play. There was a play where he's lined up press, single receiver, but he's got deep third, and the quarterback looks over, sees the press corner. I was like, look, check fade, check fade. Timoni bails off, and the quarterback's standing there, and he's like shocked. <laughs> I can't throw there. And then he looks all over the place and ends up throwing it away. Yeah. But, no, it's, it's awesome to see. And then with that jump ball fade, it was I, I loved hearing you from across the window. And it's funny because, like, we – my wife and I were watching the film. She helps me great at night, and we're like, dang, he should have caught that, but – <laughs> he, he tipped it away. He barely got off the ground. Talks about all the money he's had. But your wife he helps go. you grade film. I tell her she doesn't have to. She does not have to help me. <laughs> I tell her she does not have to help me, but she's like, no, I want to. Dude, you hit a home run. So I mean, that's I, awesome, right? <laughs> I'll pull up the film on my iPad, and as we're going through, I'm like, plus, good effort, <laughs> minus, eyes in the wrong spot, all that kind of stuff, and she'll type it in the computer for me. Yeah, that's and great. this is at like. Midnight. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome, man. That's yeah. great. That's great. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. yeah. I, I enjoy this. Absolutely. Absolutely. We'll do it again. Malik Shavery, cornerbacks coach for the Flying Fleet. And uh, best of luck this coming Saturday, homecoming. Thank you. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. We'll jump out, take our last break of the show. We'll have Coach Chatboyd in. We'll be previewing uh, Virginia Lynchburg. I think they're the Dragons? Yep, they are yeah, the Dragons. the Dragons. The Dragons are coming to town. <laughs> We'll be previewing them, all that and more when we come back right here on the Flying Fleet. Gridiron Revival live from Irene's. We'll be right back. <laughs> 